I think this is the first time I've ever drilled holes into a perfectly good boat, but here we go. My earth girl. Mmm, you want a salad? I'm not gonna eat it, but we'll give it to the chickens. Mm, I bet they'll love them. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you are gearing up for a safe and fun Memorial Day weekend and maybe getting out on the water to do some dangling or some just driving. By the way, today's video is sponsored by Mercury Motors. Mercury is the newest sponsor to the channel and they are hooking myself and the Guggen Squad up with uh, with some gear, including uh, some outboard motors that I'm gonna be putting on the Crispy Collector, um, some new outboard motors for our bass boats. Yes, another bass boat coming. And then also uh, just some other boats, some aluminum boats, pontoon boats and everything. So we're gonna be showing you guys that as we go along. But hey, guess what? Speaking of motors as well, the truck is back, the Dirty Max. And I got it off a lot yesterday. It hasn't broken yet. So, you know, half a day in existence on the road hasn't failed me yet. So they had to replace the intake manifold. And I'm no expert, but that's a that's a pretty important part in there. So the fans were just running constantly. It's like the engine was trying to cool itself down. There was a there was a major issue. But it seems to be fixed now. I paid zero dollars. It's all under warranty. And when you get one of these dirty maxes, you actually get uh, an extended or it's more mileage on your warranty. I think it's eighty or a hundred thousand instead of like the standard 50 or 60 that's on a gas engine so you know if you got issues you're covered a little bit longer i'm about to hook this up to the crispy collector and we are going to go check out a brand new motor i've been told it's at the guggen hq i have never put a motor on a boat but we're going to do it today so let's go see how hard this is we might be in for a long adventure on the trance let's do a, just a quick chicken check right now are they gonna like these sprouts? Anything green gets attacked. I think they're gonna love them. I'll just let them out so they're not like too crazy. Okay. Ravenous beasts. They're curious, they're not. Oh, oh, the duck. Yeah, the duck just went right in. It's usually just a massacre. I'll oh, be in picky. They are a little picky. Being picky today. You know, you pay high high dollar at, for those at the at the farmer's market. We paid nothing. Just the bird seed. Do this correctly. Just scoot her on back. Just don't poke it right in the middle. Oh, we're good. Beautiful. Alrighty, folks, we are at the HQ. What happened? So we have we have heavy machinery here. Rob loves to get on that heavy machinery and move things. So so we were gonna move it by hand and then realized this thing is extremely heavy. So new Mercury motor has come in. It is a four-stroke. I currently have a two-stroke on here. So we're gonna be switching up. Hopefully it's a little quieter and uh, it just sips. It's a little hummingbird sipper on that gas. Okay, I guess this is gonna be my first ever motor unboxing. It's kind of a big item, it's exciting. Oh my gosh, this thing's huge. Oh, and it comes with oil. Four stroke, 10W30. So I'm definitely gonna to have to re-rig my gas tanks right now, because right now it's full of uh, pre-mixed I think this is going to have an oil reservoir that mixes itself, hopefully. Hey, I got no motor. Right now we've got a naked crispy. Y'all, I've never done this before. I am not an expert. So we're gonna be learning together. So repowering the crispy collector with the four stroke. This motor is EFI. It's gonna be hooking up to the battery. I only have one battery in here and it runs the trolling motor right now. So 
Hopefully I can just stick with one battery and that's gonna be enough to run everything, but we'll see. So let's flip this big old mark up, stick it right on here and see how it looks. Thing might not this, come out of the hole. Let's go see. The boat's gonna go across yeah. the water like this. It's know. rated for this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same horsepower. Just... Well, it's the same. horsepower, that's not what I'm talking about. What about weight? This is, a, this is a tin shed right here. This is like a, look at this thing. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to find out. Alright, you ready? We're good. Okay. Yep. 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 That's not too bad. No. Oh, should be good. That's pretty. Shoo! It's good. Okay, it says right here, add four stroke oil. What does that say? <laughs> add four stroke oil before starting the engine. So I'm guessing it has a reservoir. It's probably right here. There you go. There we go. Okay, we got the old Merc mounted. I'm just gonna tighten up these these bolts right here. I'm hoping that it's this easy. So we got the motor mounted, got it clamped down. All I've got right now to mount it was just these bolts right here. They're tight. Let me show you this bracket. This is an extended um, frame from the other one that I had and it can actually bolt in and, and be a little sturdier. Uh, but since I don't want to put any other holes in the boat, I'm just going to take a pause on that for now. If I see an issue with it with the motor really trying to lift up then I may have to go with some bolts that uh, came with it. So it has a bolt kit. Uh, this is, looks like the prop washer and pin. It doesn't have a prop. I'm gonna have to get a prop. We've got our lanyard in here. And let me show you some of the upgrades. So it also comes with a gas tank and it has like a, it looks like a filter. So we pop this off and then you can see it has an oil reservoir right here. It's where you put your oil in. It has your dipstick right here, so you can check all that. It has an electric start. That is huge. Although I do enjoy giving that motor a good rip. Getting it started, it has that option if your, your battery is dead, but it's gonna hook up to my battery here and have that electric start. It also has trim, just like my big bass boat. So that is on the tiller handle right here. So while you're driving, you can adjust your trim and that's always how you get you know, the most speed and most control out of your boat is with that right there. So that is huge. My experience with two strokes versus four strokes, the four strokes just, they just sip on the gas. Now I've had some bass boats that just ran through oil and gas and just you just end up spending a ton of money. I think what I'm gonna do, I already have gas tanks in here, but because you know, they've been run with oil in them so long, I think, uh, I think I'm going to put at least this one in here. This is a bigger gas tank. It's a 6.6 6 .6 gallon, I believe. And I'm going to try to slide this one in there and see if it'll fit. And then I'll keep this one as an extra just in case I run out somewhere. Looks like I'm actually going to be able to take this little frame out right here and not have to remove the battery, which would be amazing. This would just be so nice if it fit in here. Oh yeah, baby. Except for that part. Handle sticks up too far for the lid to really close. So what I'm gonna have to do is just take the old saw when I, I don't have to do this right now, but I'll just take this off and that way it'll shut all the way. So right there, you know, the old flapper just isn't gonna do. And I should never have to move this, so I'm not too worried about it, but it just fits in there too good not to, to use it. Plus I like having that bigger tank. Straight up gasoline is going in there. That just always makes things easier when you don't have to mix. Got the old vacuum out, cleaned it up back there. Next mission, hook up the battery. Pretty self-explanatory here. We got a red and a black. I really need a new battery, guys. I'm probably gonna install one soon, but we're gonna go with this for now. Also got lights on here and the trolling motor, so I'll put those back on top. I haven't charged this thing in forever. We're gonna see if it's gonna get power though. 
Doesn't look like we have a key, but let's see if we're getting some power. Ooh. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay, we're getting power. Trim is working. I'm not going to start it because we don't have gasoline or oil in here. But having this right here is going to be so nice. The only thing we really have to do now is hook up the fuel line and put some oil in it and some gas. It's going to be ready to rip. Okay, hooked up to the engine. Okay, hooked up to the tank. It's both ready to run. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the treehouse now. So we get to look at it in the driveway, the new driveway that I've built, the spot for the crispy. So at this point, if you've been watching this video going, man, this guy does not know what he's doing on rigging a boat, you would be correct. So after I started actually digging into the instructions, because I was thinking, you know, I, I didn't know this was gonna be a, um, a tilt, uh, electronic tilt. My other motor would just like flip up if you hit a stump. This one will not. This one is going to hit something and it's, it's going to mess something up. So I need to be able to really make sure this thing is, is locked down and not going anywhere. And then um, I was looking, I was reading at the, the cavitation plate setting. Um, this cavitation plate really needs to be kind of like basically like right at the bottom of the boat. That's gonna really make this thing smooth and stable in the water and where it's at right now is a little low. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drill. I'm just gonna drill, drill, drill. Now to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know if this transom is really gonna hold up um, being mounted differently than where it is right now. But this is, this is what I feel like needs to be done so this thing's gonna operate correctly. You can do this by yourself. If you're looking to repower, you can definitely do it. I'm just trying to get it done in a day and take it out of the water. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's probably not going to happen. So my goal for the end of this video is to be able to at least poke it in the water, turn it on, get it to start. And because it's electronic fuel injected, it should start up right away. You know, no more of the, the choking and all that stuff. So I feel really good about where the motor is sitting in terms of just being directly in the center. You obviously want that, but uh, these holes right here, you've got four different slots, and then you've got a one big slot right here that can move up and down. So to start off, I'm gonna take my metal bit on my drill, and I'm gonna go right through here on that top slot. And then that way my holes are set, they're in line right here, and I can raise this up. Hopefully I'll be able to raise it up myself. I'm no longer at the warehouse, don't have Rob, so. Uh, I don't have a winch either. We're just gonna have to muscle it the old-fashioned way. But this way, it's sitting flush right now. It's clamped down. Um, I'm, I'm gonna drill it dead center on each side, and then that way it'll be even. Even though I'm gonna go up, probably to the I'm gonna guess the third or maybe even the fourth notch, so we can get that cavitation plate even with the bottom of the boat. So, got it started with the metal bit. Now moving on to the big bit. This is, I think this is the first time I've ever drilled holes into a perfectly good boat, but here we go. One, two, three, and four. Working up a sweat out here, y'all. I got the bottom bolts in. These bolts are on a uh, on a loose track or an open track right here, so they can move. I can move this up. The top bolts I can't put in until I lift this up and get it in the correct hole position. I've already tried to lift this motor. It's extremely heavy. I might try to call in OSG, you know, for a little muscle. We'll see what happens. If any of y'all out there have a wife that'll just come out and help you lift up an outboard motor, God bless you. So I went to a cinder block and a jack, you know, just straight up redneck stuff, but that's all right. Maybe I do need OSG's help. So the problem is it's catching on top fasteners when I try to raise it up. So I do have a wife that'll help me mount an outboard motor. God bless me. 
God bless her, really. Let's be honest. Come back here, push forward on the motor. Oh, a little bit more. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. Oh gosh. It's not very light. Oh. <laughs> a little bit more to the right. It's looking perfect. Hang in there. We're through. All right. All right. See, see if you can let off. All right. That's it. That's it. What? You saw the bobcat? Are you sure it was a bobcat? Oh boy. See him? Talk to me. He's straight ahead through these two trees. I see his face. Through the two trees? To, through, oh, to the just, right or to the left? He just went down. He's making his way out. Oh, oh, I see him. I see him. He's looking at us. You see him through through the vines right there? Through the vines? Through is the he vines. up high or on yeah, the ground? He's looking at us. He's kind of orange. Oh, I see him. Yeah. Here. Oh, that is definitely the old bobcat there. Oh, my God. He does see me. Get her. Y'all, this bobcat is sitting here looking at Emmy. Right in there. That bobcat. I'm going to try to sneak around. Okay, I'm going to try to sneak up on it. That's impossible, but I'm going to try to get a better look. Okay, screw that. I'm getting the pellet gun. <sighs> of course, by the time I get the pellet gun down here, it's gone. That's the first time I've seen it just blatantly in the middle of the day. That bobcat has been around here for months, as you guys know, and um, it needs to die. It's outsmarted my traps. <sighs> we'll keep on the hunt, keep the lookout. Progress, we're making progress. So I got my holes drilled, I got the bolts through. There's one, two, three, four. I'm gonna apply some silicone sealant now to the shank of the bolts. It says not to put it on the thread, which would be this part right here. So I'm gonna back them out and I'm going to squeeze a bunch of this on there and I kind of just wanted to get gummed up right in those holes and you know what my jack system kind of worked it's janky but it worked I actually think we might be able to get this thing at least at the boat ramp and get it started today probably three hours left of daylight so we should be good go back these out back when I had a little aluminum boat which you guys have never seen on this channel is the the bandito is what I called it uh, this was my friend right here. I had rivets coming out and all sorts of stuff and um, I would keep sealant in the boat. And I actually, my first few bass boats I always did just because it's, you never know when you're gonna need it. It's pretty useful. Really squeeze that stuff on there good. So in the manual, it says to tighten those nuts to 55 pounds, foot-pounds of torque. I actually have a torque wrench. I've got it set to 55 pounds. It says if it can't handle 55 pounds, it probably ain't the right boat. But I've been surprised how strong the welding is on here. Okay, just heard it break over. I mean, I heard the torque wrench break over. 55 pounds so we're good no cracks in the hole the lock thread somehow got busted out of there I think it's because some of some metal shavings that were in there that's uh, that ain't good but uh, we're gonna have four others so we'll, uh, we'll just hope that it holds the good news is we don't have any cracks right here I was worried about because this isn't solid through here it's two pieces but it looks to be strong enough to hold that 55 pounds, which is perfect. Got them all locked down to 55. That thing came off. I was using a uh, impact, not a, I wasn't using an impact wrench. I was actually just using a driver. That might've been a little too much for that thing. So it popped it off, but blasted some silic silicone on it. The problem with that is though, it's sticking out. When I go to put the gas tank in, we got some issues. Uh, 
Uh, all that work for a nub. All right, tank fits in there now. I'm also, while I have this all, I'm just gonna go ahead and hack these off. Uh, a little bit easier on this one. Okay. Well, steel that shut. I did it, y'all. I did it. I have mounted this thing solid, just like the direction said. She's good to go. So, now we need to put some oil in here. And I have some gasoline here at the house, unmixed. So, we'll put some gas in, and then we'll take it to the lake to see if it'll start up. Before we head to the lake, actually we gotta put some oil in there first, but before we head to the waters, I've gotta yeah. eat some of these. These are crappie cakes. That's right, OSG, I did not make these. This is her Bob. doing. What was that bobcat? You didn't even see it. A cat cat. Yeah. A cat. Uh, yeah, I said, there's a bobcat. She goes, cat? <laughs> no, not that kind of cat. Oh. Have you tried one of these? Oh, I have. I already ate dinner. What do you think about it? Uh, Emmy loved them, first of all. Mm. She ate the entire thing. Oh, my. She could. You want a bite? Yeah, she loves them. They're crispy. Whoa. Whoa. You don't want it now? You want to pick your nose? We got our motor rigged up. So we can go catch more crappie. One. Okay, there's two. Just for giggles. Let's see if we can get it start right here in the driveway. It's on run. Let's see what happens. Oh wait. I need to I need to learn where the off is first. Okay, off right there. Okay, referring back to the Manuel. Oh, I think I know the deal. I didn't have the kill switch lanyard in there. I didn't think that would make a difference, but it does. So you have to have that in there while it's on run. We are at that moment right now. We have all been waiting for. Let's give it a turn over. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. That's purring. Trimmer on down. That's all I'm gonna do today. Big shout out to uh, Fane at Fun and Son because I called him on the way over here because I was thinking, if I don't have a prop nut on there, is water gonna get in the lower unit? And he said, do not put it in gear. It's bad. So without a propeller, don't put it in gear. That's why I scream is strong. Quiet. She's purring real nice. This is definitely quieter than my two stroke. So y'all, I'm excited. There's a lot of adventures about to happen with this motor. Shout out to Mercury for hooking me up, man. I'm excited. And I did this myself. I, I didn't know if it could be done. You know, after I get, got to looking at it, the brackets needed to be drilling holes and all that, but uh, I think it's gonna work, y'all. We gotta take it out for a test drive, see what that top speed is, see how it turns and burns. New power on the crispy. And if there's any of you out there that are looking to repower, uh, you can do it yourself. So it might save you a little bit of money uh, from getting it like a you know tech to doing it, uh, at least up to a 25 or a 30 horsepower. When it gets beyond that, you got steering cables and that madness, I have no idea. But if I can do it, y'all can do it, I promise you. So thank you for tuning in today. Make sure to hit that like button for a smooth new motor running, and I will see you guys very soon. God bless you. One more thing I gotta show y'all today. There's a, there's a big slithery no shoulder in the road. I think it's a good kind. Got hit. Some, some gun got hit. I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry, bud. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throw you over here. Always got to flick a snake. Just put him in his spot, you know. <laughs>